Welcome back, awesome Action Toy fans and subscribers. We're on Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2024, looking at these Acid Rain World last line of defense, uh, Red Crow Winder, or could be Winder, I think it's going to be Winder, and the Hayodoshi, it looks like. Uh, these are from the Yamato, was it Yamato uh, faction, um, or that land anyway. Do look pretty cool. I think I'm probably looking forward more to the to the uh, figure than the actual speed of actually the speed looks pretty cool there. The speed of stroke mech. Um, I was really, really am, still am a big fan of the speeder mark. Is it one or two? The bigger one, uh, the sand one. I put a link in the top right for that. That was one of the I think it's the second vehicle that came out for Australia. It was absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. Um, got two of those and they're probably worth a pretty penny now. They're quite hard to find. But anyway, I'm digressing. Let's get a look at the. Uh, the boxes, so on the uh, winder, much smaller box than I was expecting. That does look very reminiscent of that speeder I mentioned earlier. And then we see a picture there. Looks pretty cool. Quite like that. So got the that. We've got two Hanai Bai SA submachine guns and two Kanai SA combat knives and a gear, gear buckle times two. Not sure what that's for. Hope there's instructions inside. Should be for the transformation. And then we have the Hiroshi, looks like a reminiscent of a pretty cool soldier or pilot. Lots of the same parts we've seen already. So, you know, they're just maximizing the uh, cost of the tooling to maximize their profitability, return on investment. But we're not complaining, so that's look pretty cool. Right, I'm gonna box them setting up. I'll be back in an instant, stay tuned. Okay, here they are. So first impressions. Figure is nice, I'm not sure about that pattern on his head. The speed it is nice, but those guns which I've attached to the side, that's where they go, just don't look good at all. In fact, they look better without those guns on. I just think there's something that's not right with those guns, whether they're an after four, a bit rushed, not enough detail or something, they just look a bit, yeah. Look at that a bit closer in a moment. Let's look at the, uh, the accessories. So with our figure first, Hayadoshi, had this really nice sword, but it is a bit, Bendy, but he has nowhere to stow it on his body, which is a bit of a bit of a shame. As everyone was usually quite good with having places to stow weapons and whatnot. Uh, comes with his knife, which is really nice. Again, there is nowhere to stow that knife on his body. I'll have a look again in a second and look at him. He also comes with a sidearm and a three barrel shotgun, which is fantastic. Look at that when you get a close look. And with our winder, we get these two blades which they can hold, which you can hold, and it's in its a uh, mech mode. Those are pretty nice, but need some dry brushing. And I'm guessing there's a little tab in this wrist or hand to clip that into when he's holding it. Then the two guns, you can see the gun here, just very, yeah, just not great, I don't think. And then this is the little peg that you have to insert. But once you get it in, it's really hard to take out. You need to get yourself some nice pliers and hopefully don't put any teeth mark. See, that's not easy to come out. I don't want to squeeze much tighter on that. There we go. You don't get your teeth marks into your... Uh, I'm okay. Into your little thing there. And you get two because you've got two guns and there's two swords. Um, but you don't need these or you shouldn't need these for the swords since they don't attach in the speeder mode and you see that the the hole in here in the gun is much bigger than the one in the sword stroke knife so it won't fit in the same thing okay so that's the accessories please consider joining the patreon link on the top right of the screen now you're going to see all the videos before they're published on youtube exclusive content from time to time and prize draws from time to time too. We had one just a few days ago back to prize draw. Okay, so let's bring in for a close look. So we do our figure first, the Hydro Sheet with this really nice free barrel shotgun. That is fantastic. So he's got shells going around there. Should really sort of dry brush that or paint them separately. I'm not convinced on that sort of head pattern on his helmet there. But basically again he's an Arena Sentinel. Slightly different armor. Head's been changed a little bit from the original, but it's the same legs, low body, whatnot. Then he's got his side arm here, which is quite contemporary looking, but very nice again, with a drilled barrel. 
very nice with the soft goods across here as well that looks really good and feels nice to the touch it's a nice looking figure then bring our speeder in in this configuration it is quite reminiscent of the other speeder the sand speeder but that's got four wheels and it's only got three and then we can start seeing some sort of the hands and bits underneath when we turn it upside down the wheels do turn but you can't sort of push it along and free with it because they're quite stiff particularly this front one here back one a little bit okay this one a little bit okay this one not at all though it does turn but that's pretty cool okay let me take the guns out of his hand or the gun out of his hand not the guns we'll keep his side arm in his holster let me see about putting him in putting him into the uh, speeder so i'm guessing that's gonna come up really quite far not too bad is there a place for his feet not that i can see uh, these are on sort of wires, I guess, strings, wires, so they can quite easily move out of the way. Luckily, acid renal figures usually have fantastic articulation and the sculpting may get in the way in some things. I'm not sure where his feet are supposed to hang. Are they go at the bottom or they just flop on there? See, he's not going to fit in a very nice like that. Oh, this is going to be one of those difficult ones. Be far easier if I actually transformed it first, I think, than to fit him in like that. But okay, I think the feet might have to go side to side of that, which is fortunate. His legs don't actually go that close together with his armor, so it'll be slightly easier like this. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere now. He's in, and that should be able to come down. Oh, I see this feet there. Ah, I didn't see those before. Got the little foot plates there. Can you get this onto it? There and there, you see. Ah, oh, they do move the foot plates, that's good. Okay, okay. So, like that, then these can come down and you can make him hold the. Handles. Well, I'm not going to articulate that now. It's got wrist clips as well. So he'd fit in. And these are articulated as well, the uh, part of the feet. That's pretty cool. He fits in pretty well, to be fair. Not too bad. <sighs> and he should be to stay in for the transformation process. Actually, maybe I will make him hold the, uh, hold the handles and stuff. Since this is quite loose. And, or rather not loose, rather it's like a cable or wire. It should be a fair bit easier to get him in. Because you're not fighting so much resistance like you do with a lot of other stuff. I just worry about things snapping as you're putting into place. Okay, there's one. And here nearly is two, close enough. That's pretty cool. Not very armoured, but it looks like it's quite fast. But if he hits a bump there, he's going to be in big trouble. Okay, pretty cool. Quite like that. Okay, transformation. I'm not going to do this on camera because it's probably going to take about half an hour trying to figure things out. Oh, his little head thing dropped out. And then I'll waste you guys' time. So I will do it off camera and I'll come back when it's uh, transformed and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I'll be back in an instant for you guys. Heaven knows how many minutes for me. So see you in a second, in an instant. Well, that is a bigger than I was expecting. It's actually not a too bad transformation process. The worst part is the first part. You've got to pull the legs apart and these unclip um, from here. But when you do it, it's like, is it supposed to? How hard do I pull? Then it sort of pops out. Um, and there's something really nice that I didn't notice earlier. There's a really nice display console. We can't see it now because it's buried in his face up there. Um, yeah, there is the little peg on the hands, as I suspected, to hold the gun and the knife. Is it a nice looking mech? Honestly, for how skinny it is, I think it's too tall. You'd think it'd be a little bit smaller. I mean, it can make it smaller with his legs and whatnot. It's 
quite nice. I you know I'm I want to say I'm a huge fan, but I quite like it. I think transforming it back into the into the speeder mode is going to be a nightmare because um, there's no reverse instructions. Just just go backwards. But how did I bend the arms? How did I do this? Because it doesn't really show that in the instructions. And some of the instructions aren't very clear. We need to have reading glasses. You're like 50 years old like me to sort of make out what it's showing. I wish they would do color instructions on their uh, on their transformation process processes for acid rain mode. Anyway, let's get a close look. I'll move the camera in fact. So a little sort of mech head so the guy's face is buried deep inside there this actually clips on if i unclip that you can see that nice control hey it stayed in there it came off look at that didn't realize it comes off it's not supposed to come off there we go you can see that nice control panel i was talking about pretty cool with the coloring on the screen there's two little pins you can sort of make you make them out here and here which pins that into place It's quite nice, but I think it'd be far more effective in its uh, speeder mode than this mode. I guess if it's doing some sort of guard patrol, this would be pretty cool. And yes, the pilot can stay in when you're transforming it. It's okay. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll do articulation on, we we'll do size and articulation on this mech, um, or exo suit stroke mech. When that's done, I'll transform it back into the speeder mode, or attempt to and do size of the speeder and articulation of the pilot after that. And then we do um, some comparisons. Actually, I'll do comparison as well before I transform it back. So let's look at articulation of this. So head to bottom. So the head is a left, right. There is no side to side. There is a up and down, two up and downs, neck and the uh, uh, base of the head and base of the neck. Shoulders all the way around. It's going to have amazing shoulder articulation. I can't do that on my arm at that angle. Look at that. And all the way to touch his head that way. There is a bicep turn, I guess, if his arm is... Is it bicep turn? I'll just make... I'll just fall off. His head thing fell off. There's no bicep turn per se on this. You can turn from and out on that sort of secondary shoulder part. Uh, yeah, sorry, you can. There's a bicep turn here. So double elbow joint is a very big elbow. Look at that space there. So it gets very tight. Arms are very long. The hands are jointed for, you can see that. So it jointed for wave articulation and they will swivel around. And that's come out there. I think there's nothing on the waist that I can see. Legs, interestingly, they go out from the thigh, not from the hip, but they'll go backwards and forwards, full splits from the uh, hip. They will also go forwards and backwards from the thigh a little bit. And I think there's a knee, there's a knee joint as well. Nice with the piston work, that looks good. And then you've got this little part comes down, the flap comes down to uh, balance and you've got a turn there. I might have missed something there, but I don't know. It's not bad. I mean, it's not a bad looking thing. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be in this mode, that's for sure. What have I done? It doesn't want to stand up now. There's one leg longer than the other. What have I not straightened out on this? Okay, there we go. So I think this is probably about as tall as I can make it for the... Uh, Size, let's get the arms down. So height wise, to the very, very top, big boy like this, not that big. I'm making this approximately 10, just around, just over 10 inches. So you're looking around about this, around about 20, five and a half cm to the very top there so it's very very big let's do a quick mech comparison first i use red dwarf mech a mangan and this is nowhere near as tall but it's far more chunky 
and it has far, far, far heavier firepower, but it's no way near as fast as that one. That is in its uh, speeder configuration. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Sniping from a couple of kilometers away. I know which one I would uh, put my money on in hand-to-hand -hand combat or a shooting battle. That's definitely, definitely this uh, one here. It's more protection for the pilot too, though the pilot is exposed from the side. But, you know, it's not my favourite mech, the Red Dwarf, or this new winder. However, it's nice that the aesthetic is actually quite different, though it still looks like it belongs to the same universe. And I like the difference because, obviously, you've got a manga, you've got Yamato, and whatnot. Okay, let's put this one down. Okay, so now I'm going to transform this back into the speeder, and I'll do the size of the speeder, size of the figure, figure articulation, and a figure comparison. So stay tuned, back in an instant for you guys. Okay, transformation back was not as <laughs> not that easy. I actually had to go back to the first part of the video and take a screenshot to work out how the shoulder and arm attached there. But now that's done, it is back as it was. Okay, let's get an idea of its size and speeder mode and the figure size. And then we'll do figure articulation, which we know what it's gonna be like already pretty much. And then do a figure comparison. So the speeder in height, the toppest part here, the toppest part, the tallest part here is under three and a half inches. So it's around about eight and a half cm, a bit shorter maybe. And the actual length of it is about 19 cm, about seven, nearly seven and a half inches. And the width, I think the front's probably the widest part. You can see there, it's about four inches, about 10 cm. So our figure, he's should be about 11, I'd imagine. He's just under 11 cm. So his articulation, been no surprises here, since it's the same as the Renew Sentinel, pretty much as the other ones we've seen from this land. <coughs> Excuse me. So his articulation. So, let's that. He can look left, oops, that little thing from his head keeps popping out. So he can look left, and that's it. No. And right, up and down, and small side to side. Shoulders all the way around, the soft goods don't really impede. There is a small shoulder roll here, because the ball joint inside. Lateral raise, they fixed that, they used to be quite bad on this. He's getting to flat, which is fantastic. Bicep bend, he's getting over 90, which is great. Wrist, he's got gun articulation on this side um, and also gun the other side. There is trunk, but behind this vest, you won't get much. But the waist, you can twist, can't really forward backwards, can't really side to side. Hips, about yay far, much more than that. Hips might pop out of joint, plus is being impeded now on the outwards. Forwards, armor gets away a little bit, so it's not fantastic. And backwards is okay before it starts splaying out. There is a thigh twist, it's a double kneecap. And very nicely done, so you get super tight, despite being quite a chunky boy. And then feet, there is a boot turn, which I love. Also the swivel. Then he has a decent tippy toe, but a pretty poor dorsiflexation because the tongues and the shoes get in the way. So it's not bad articulation, it's pretty good articulation. I always expect acid rain to have decent articulation. In fact, they are some of the cons most consistently good articulated action figures in 118 scale, or perhaps maybe any scale. You know, they do go all out a lot of time for articulation. Sometimes to the point of figures looking a little bit ugly, but in terms of the joints, but they do look good there. Okay, let's put him there. So let's use our same faction, our hazmat running. And also our, 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 I've forgotten his name now all of a sudden. Why has it escaped me? How is his name? Uh, oh, come back to me. Anyway, these guys are reviewed together, so you see the review for both of these, and you see that they do look good. There's also the uh, paratrooper I've not put there. If I get my Narinu Sentinel, which is the first one from this uh, land in the Acid Rain world, bear in mind I have got a Fortnite fade head on my Narinu Sentinel, so it's not the original head. 
but you see that the legs are the same, the lower legs and whatnot. Let's stick him in here. Colour's a bit different, but it's the same land, and you get a nice lineup of figures. I think these are looking pretty good if I am honest now somewhere around here if I can quickly find it there we go I've got these free 3d printed heads here but let's see what they look like I did try on the uh, new says no I think we're trying this new guy let's take this head off a second please come, don't come everything off just it yeah just the head not the whole peg and everything else that comes with it there we go. Now this head's obviously not painted the 3D one. It might be a bit big, but is that gonna fit on the peg? No, I need to drill the part, but that would look pretty damn. <laughs> Epic having that on there. I am tempted to get some just bodies from this faction so you can get bodies online. And put these heads on. I have a little squad of these sort of robotic soldiers for my uh, for my Yamato Red Crow <gasps> faction. Okay, let's put this head back on. Nice. Um, I like that speeder in the speeder mode. It's okay in mech mode for me, but the speeder mode I think looks looks great. I did pick up two, so I'm quite happy about that. But I wouldn't get more than that. I just think it's nice, but not super, super, super that nice. If you know, know what I'm saying. Another nice release. I'm hoping to see some more stuff from them, but I really want to see the, um, is it Cerebus or whatever mech from the Amangans. We saw like a prototype from B25. I'll put a link to that video in the top right, but bear in mind the B25 one, if I've got a video for that, or if I've just got the picture, I can't remember. The B25 one is in 128, it's gone not 118, and that's from years back, and B25 is website is like, we're coming back soon, so I don't know if they're still in business or not, I hope they are. Anyway, this is Awesome Matcher Toys, I am signing out, saying please like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and remember, you can get cheaper Acid Rain World figures from the video description below from Calkiss Toys, because they have uh, free shipping, and there's also a discount code as well. So it is worth checking out that video description below. I'll see you next video soon. Stay happy and keep collecting. Bye-bye.